Amos chapter number 7. Thus hath the Lord God showed unto me. Chapter 6, chapter 5, chapter 4. And behold, he, God, it's a new thing now, formed grasshoppers in the beginning of the shooting up of the latter growth. And lo, it was the latter growth after the king's mowing. So here's a crop coming up after a harvest and grasshoppers coming down. God calleth to them. And it came to pass that when they had made an end of an end of eating the grass of the land, and they, according to Joel, they would do a thorough cleaning. But we got to read the whole passage together. Because if we don't finish this passage, this will leave you with something that did not happen. The grassland, then I said, O Lord God, forgive, I beseech thee, by whom shall Jacob arise? For he is small. The Lord repented for this. It shall not be, save the Lord. So God was going to send a grasshopper to destroy Israel. And Amos stood in the gap and said, Lord, you do that. There's going to be nobody left. God says, okay, I won't do it. Exactly what Moses does. Exactly what the Lord Jesus Christ does. Stands in the gap. I'm going to destroy it. The Father, they're under the blood. Okay. No one else can do that. But the Lord Jesus Christ. Thus hath the Lord God showed unto me. And behold, the Lord God called to contend by fire. And it devoured a great deep. And did eat up a part. So here's a destruction by fire. Our God's a consuming fire. Then said I, O Lord God, cease, I beseech thee, by whom shall Jacob arise? For he is small. The Lord repented for this. This also shall not be, saith the Lord God. You know how many, how do I say it? One man saved Israel from being completely destroyed. You know, they say that if God and Moses ever got in a bad attitude, a bad mood on the same day, Israel would have been gone. If Amos didn't stand in the gap, Israel north would have been gone. How do you know they're not gone? Aren't there tribes listed among the 144,000? Except for Dan and, Dan and Ethereum. But they'll show up later. Their names are uh, with the doors or the the gates or the, the foundations of New Jerusalem. All I got to say is you keep praying for that person you're praying for. Whether it be salvation, whatever it is. The Lord repented for this. This also shall not be, saith the Lord God. Then, I mean, excuse me, thus he showed me. And behold, the Lord stood upon a wall made by a plumb line with a plumb line in his hand. So there's two things here. There's a plumb line. What well, this is, this is, a, this is a string used by carpentry. And it has a weight. And if you were to hang it, tie it to something, and let it hang down, let the weight carry it down, it would be a perfect vertical line of straightness. It's a very simple uh, cheap instrument to use when you want a straight line. And the Lord said unto me, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, a plumb line. Then said the Lord, Behold, I will set a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel, and I will not again pass by them any more. Uh oh. So God's not going to wipe them totally out. He's going to put a line. He's going to put a division. You need to get that word. 
Because it's a biblical word. I don't care what you think. And God says there are people on this side and there are people on that side. And the people on, on, on whatever side, I'm not going to have nothing to do with them. The vision shows through all the way through Genesis to Revelation. You lose your rewards. Go ahead. And the high places of Isaac shall be desolate. High places. That's where they're worshiping gods. That's the temples. That's the steeples. That's the rocket places. That's the mountains. That's the, the, the towers. That's anywhere to get to God by not getting to God by God and the sanctuaries uh -oh, of Israel churches mosques tabernacles temples synagogues shall be laid waste destruction and I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword army king's house and it will happen There's no aim is breaking in on this one. Because there's no utter destruction. Somebody will be left. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to Jeroboam, king of Israel, saying, <coughs> Amos has conspired against thee in the midst of the house of Israel. Amos is speaking bad about you, king. We've read seven chapters. Besides the introduction to Amos, Jeroboam was mentioned once. We're going to go run and tell. All the things you're saying, he's been saying bad about you. All he says is one thing, war is coming. And Amos is not conspiring nothing. He's preaching the word of God. Now had Amaziah walked into the king's throne room, up to the king and bowed down and say, Oh, your highness and all that other blah, blah, blah. Say, your highness, Amos is out there. He's preaching some judgment of God upon us. We need to do something. We really need to seek God to see if he's correct or find out if he's telling a lie. But there's one thing we need to do. We need to find out what Amos is saying. And is it true? How's that? That's yay or nay. I mean, this. But he says, Amos has conspired against thee in the midst of the house of Israel. So that brings a negative impact on the king. There's a liar out there and he's preaching against you, your highness. The land is not able to bear all his words. Now, if you've been in any public ministry, you know what that word is. You know what that's a, get out of here. Get, get, Bring it back in the church. Get off my property. Get off my doorstep. This is not the place. For thus Amos saith, Jeroboam shall die by the sword. Let's see what Jeremiah is. I mean, let's ain't Jeremiah. Let's see what Amos said, verse 9. I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Amaziah said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword. Is that what Amos said? And Israel shall surely be led captive out of their own land. Well, he kind of said that. He's been saying that. But we take a personal attack against the king first. We've been talking about the captivity of Israel, yes. We've been talking about the judgment upon Israel, yes. 
But the king came last, but we got to bring that one. I mean, we got to go to the king with the king matter first. Priority. Get the king mad first. And Amaziah said, Unto Amos, O thou seer. Now that's sarcastic because he doesn't believe what he's saying. That's as much as many people on the street go, Well, I'm a Christian. Really? Really? Don't you think just because everybody who claims to be a Christian is a Christian? This guy is using sarcasm. Go. All in the world to preach the gospel? No. Flee thee away into the land of Judah. Get out of here. Take your Bible, take your message, and leave. We don't want to hear it. You, you're turning the people away. You're not doing it right. Take your awful, judgmental God message, don't judge me, and get out of here. Flee thee away into the land. Get down south. Remember, we're up north. We're in Israel. We're in the ten tribes up north. Take it to Judah. And there eat bread and prophesy there. Go eat your food down there. Go, go live down there, will you? Get out of our house. Get out of our land. Get off our property. Leave us alone. Boy, I've heard that. 11, 12 years of, of preaching the gospel to people. I've heard that many to Get out of here. What are you doing here? It gives you the right. But prophesy not again anymore at Bethel. For it is the king's chapel. Who cares? You mean, if this is the king's chapel... You do not want to hear the word of God? Something wrong with that picture? But how many <clears throat> chapels, mosques, tabernacles, churches, synagogues, whatever you want to call it, living room studies, Bibles, how many of them are there worldwide that do not want to hear the word of God? And when you come in with the Bible, get out of here. Leave. That doesn't work. You're upsetting the people. You don't have a tender heart. You don't know the Hebrew. You don't know the Greek. Get out of here. Don't tell me about Easter. It's fun for the kids. Don't pick on Santa Claus. Leave our Christmas tree alone. You skip church to go tell people about Jesus. Blah, 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 blah. We don't want to hear it. It's not welcome in our chapel. It is not welcome in our our church what the word of God this is 787 BC the date of the Schofield Bible reference it hasn't changed in, in 2016 plus 787 years you go up to someone in a church and say to him hey look the Bible says right here look 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 call no man your father look that's just your opinion we don't want that here. Close that book here. I've got my 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 re, le, bleh, I got my leader up there to tell me what 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 the, the, the I'm supposed to believe. I got these magazines that tell me what I'm supposed to believe. Who cares that Jesus said I and the Father one? We've got our. We don't want that here. Get off our property. Sound familiar? We're gonna come onto your property, but when we when you come onto our property, we're gonna call the police. Sound familiar? Take that Bible and get out. That's what he's saying. For it's the king's chapel and it is the king's court. Look at America. Look, look. You won't want the Bible in the king's court. How's that? References. Isaiah 30.10. Jeremiah 11.21. 2.12 and Micah 
Seven, looks like 13. That's a pretty bold statement from a priest. The priest that's in Bethel, the holy cow priest. Remember, he's not the priest of the Lord God. He's the priest of the cows. He's milking them. He's got the golden calf. He's got the golden cow. It's in Bethel. You remember what happened in Bethel? Do you know what Bethel means? It means the house of God. It's where Jacob, fleeing from his brother, met the Lord. And began his walk with God. And when he came back with his family, he met God again at Bethel and called it El Bethel. As he, as he re-met God, as he got his life back with God to do right. And here we are. We've got our own priesthood. We've got our own God telling God, the prophet of God, get out. We don't want you in our religious service. And we already read early in the chapters that God says, go to Bethel and transgress. That's why he said it. Because that's exactly what they're doing here. We don't want God. We want the cow. We don't want Jesus Christ. We want the bunny. We don't want the cross. We want a tree. Anything else I could say? Then the people tell Samuel, we don't want God. We want to vote for a king. Is that what they told him? America doesn't want God. If America would want God, you leave the voting booth and say, God, you take over. We're going to shut the White House down. We're going to shut Capitol Hill down. We're going to send all those idiots home. And we want you to take charge of this nation. That's how you get a revival. And if you don't want God and you don't love God, get out of our nation. Start cleaning now. You're no longer welcome. That's how you get a revival. Then answer Amos. And said to Amaziah. Man, he walks right up to his face. I was no prophet. Remember during Elijah and Elijah's time, there, there were the school of the prophets, there were the sons of the prophets, there were men that were prophets. He says, you know what? I am no prophet. I'm not even one of well, Jezebel's 450 prophets. I'm not a prophet. Neither was I a prophet's son. Not a family thing. But I was a herdman. He took care of animals and a gatherer of sycamore fruit. He was a harvester. He was working when God called him. He says, I was in an occupation that had nothing to do with God as far as the calling of the ministry. I'm out there one day. I'm out there tending to the animals. I'm picking the fruits and vegetables. God said, Amos, I got, I got a ministry for you. Jeremiah was of Levi. He was of the priest. Amos isn't. He walks up to Amaziah, the priest, and says, Listen, buddy, this is not my occupation, <laughs> like yours. Like, you've been put into this office. You're being paid by this office. You're being paid by the king. You have a steady job. You probably have a tax reduction or no taxes at all and a property given to you. I, I'm sorry, I didn't say all that. He said, you know what? This is not my occupation. I was minding my own business, doing my job. And the Lord took me as I followed the flock. I'm walking with the animals one day and God tapped me on the shoulder and said, I got a job for you. And the Lord said unto me, go prophesy unto my people Israel. Just like he did to David. And he says, my people, Israel, God loves them. God's sending Amos for a reason. God is sending Amos as an instrument, as a warning. God is sending Amos, please get right. Listen. 
You guys have been in my bedroom many times, and you know where the paddle is, and you know how it is to get the paddle on the rear end. Now, I'm going to send Amos to tell you, you know, you better get right. Now, therefore, hear thou the word of the Lord. He stands up to this to his cow priest and says, hear the word of the Lord. This guy wouldn't know the word of the Lord, uh, Amaziah, if it, because he ain't got no word of the Lord. He ain't following the Lord. He's got Satan. Thou sayest, prophesy not against Israel. He's not prophesying against Israel. The message may sound like it's against Israel, but it's really for Israel. If Israel would get right, it wouldn't be against Israel. It's against the sins of Israel. It's for the, the cleansing. It's for the help. It's for the benefit of Israel. And drop not thy word against the house of Isaac. Ooh, that wasn't Ishmael, was it? You told me to shut up. But this is what God has told me to do. This is a warning, Amaziah, what God's going to do unless you get right. Therefore, therefore what? Because Amaziah opened his big mouth. Remember the guy that walked up to Jeremiah that, that, that took the wooden oaks? yokes off Jeremiah's neck and broke him. Remember that one guy? I forget his name, but over in Jeremiah. And God says, you know what? You broke the, the yokes of wood. I'm now going to put a yoke of iron upon you. Remember that? Amaziah just put more judgment on Israel. Thank you very much. Do you know one big mouth can ruin the whole bushel. Gossip can kill a church. Living like Satan and going around telling people you're a Christian will do much harm. Because I've met all kinds of people that have met you. And you are their excuse. This guy, now look, thy wife shall be an harlot in the city. How would you like to be? How would you like to be known to be married to the hussy of Bethel? Hey, is there a guy over there? Yeah, his wife's on the his wife's the street worker walker. Am I his wife? Yeah. And thy sons and thy daughters shall fall by the sword. Oh, it brings it on him now. But this is also going to happen to the nation of Israel. This is what. Uh, um, Hosea, go marry that whore. Name the children I've forsaken you. I'm done with you. This backs up Hosea's message as Hosea backs up Amos. You are now a harlot. You have sold yourself to the golden cows. And thy land. Now, Amaziah doesn't, I mean, thy land, he's probably got land, but it's, because look, now, before we read the next part, verse 8, thus saith the Lord, behold, I will set a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. Now, verse 17, thy land shall be divided by a line. See, God already told Amos about the plumb line before Amaziah opened up his big mouth. God already knew what was going to happen. The foreknowledge of God is, Amos, I mean, Amos I'm going to tell you about this plumb line, and in a minute, an hour, whatever it is, this guy's going to walk up to you with a big mouth. And Amaziah almost called for the grasshoppers to totally wipe out the land of Israel. If that's not bad enough, Amaziah almost called for fire to destroy all. But instead, 
The land shall be divided by line. There's the plumb line. And thou shalt die in a polluted land. That's how God describes the nation of Israel when they go into captivity. It's polluted. And Israel shall surely go, surely go into captivity forth of his land. Say goodbye. You're gone. If you were really a priest, you would walk up to the king and say, we need to repent. We need to get right. We need to. No, no. Don't even bring it in the church house. We're done. But they didn't know it. They brought it to the king. King said, okay, everybody stripped down. Everybody, even the cows, even the dogs. So, where do we stand in the churches today in America? Take that word of God. Take that Bible and get out. Think about all the places where the Bible is not welcome. Scary thought, isn't it? And here we are in Amos chapter 7. The priest walks up and tells you, take the Bible out of the chapel. <laughs> wow. That's a mouthful. And it goes on in 2016. The Bible's not allowed in the chapel. So, other than that, that's destruction. 